Servus and welcome to another episode here for Servus Crowd, Germany for non-Germans. And this week, well, there's only one topic we can talk about, let's be honest. Wouldn't make sense to talk about anything else. Wouldn't be fair to talk about anything else. We have to talk about Russia's invasion of Ukraine and Russia's declaration of war on Ukraine and Russia just, well, kicking off, is it World War Three? Insane times that we live in right now. Um, so, well, since this podcast tries to explain German perspectives for non-Germans, I'll try to do my best to explain A, Germany's stance on the whole situation, and B, how Germans think about it. And of course, I can't say I'm speaking for all Germans. I try to get as many opinions as possible from German friends, colleagues, people from the internet, which is always a great source, of course. Um, so just trying to paint, paint a picture. Um, if you disagree, though, of course, please do let me know. Um, I'm happy to debate, discuss those, those things. All right, so now let's start with the stance that Germany has. So first of all, of course, um, Germany, just like most other countries in the world, um, is highly critical of what's happening, obviously. They condemn it, um, what Russia is doing, and also hit, of course, Russia with all the sanctions possible, basically. Uh, a few things they haven't done yet, like as far as I'm concerned, they still haven't um, blocked the airspace, which uh, the Ukrainian president asked the German chancellor to do. Um, so I think that hasn't been done yet. However, Germany made like a huge decision the other day in the parliament. Um, so for the longest time, basically ever since the Second World War, I, I believe, um, Germany did not allow, A, that weapons that they sold to other nations would be sold to crisis hurts or would be then from the another nation sold to a crisis hurt. Meaning, let's say if you're Finland, for example, and you buy weapons from Germany, you would not be allowed to then later on move those weapons to the Ukraine now, for example, to like a crisis hurt. And it would not be allowed by contract, I guess. Germany now no 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 cancel it. I said no. It's totally cool. It's not cool. It's necessary. It's well, those are my cats. It's totally necessary um, to actually allow weapons being well transported, handed over to the Ukraine in order to help them defend themselves. So that's one thing. The next thing, Germany did not allow weapons to be transported through Germany into crisis hurts. Meaning, if the Netherlands, for example, would want to give weapons to the Ukraine, they would have not been allowed to move those weapons through Germany. Now that's also allowed. And lastly, Germany, for the first time since the war, now actively also supplies weapons to a crisis hurt to in this case to the ukraine of course so that that's all like first um for germany because well because of our history and we talk about our history for for a lot already uh, germany was always very conservative when it comes to to acting in whenever there's a crisis this led this led to a lot of um arguments, discussion amongst the European Union, why Germany being like an important player in the European Union, of course, uh, why they wouldn't step up more, why they would take on leadership roles when it comes to like things like this. But it's all, Germany always said, well, look at our history. We don't want to step up and be like known again as like the nation that, that, that tells everybody what to do because, well, we tried it twice and it didn't work out. Um, so, but there was lots of criticism because Germany is like an important economy, for example, right? It's like one of the bigger countries in, 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 in Europe. So voices have become louder saying, hey, come on, step up to the plate. You're one of the biggest players. Act like one. Um, and this now eventually happened, right? So 
we like Germany has for the longest time now always said like no 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 we're not going to get involved that we shouldn't be doing this now they said like well enough is enough we have to step up now to the plate and we have to do something we have to support Ukraine I think that's probably something but I'm not an international relations expert that's probably something that Vladimir Putin didn't see necessarily coming or happening that fast that that Germany for example would would say we support Ukraine Germany had a had a huge deal with I don't know which which company like uh, ran it like a, a gas pipeline from Russia called Nord Stream 2 um, they now canceled that so no more pipeline from Russia meaning like billions of dollars lost there and actually the company that runs this pipeline or was supposed to run the pipeline said they might actually um, declare bankruptcy so I read that just earlier today so um, also on an economic basis of course Germany like hit or pulled out all the sanctions in order to well sanction Russia now in this case. So that, that's, that's something that happened in the parliament, I think, as of yesterday. The next thing that Germany also decided on is that while we reduced our armed forces like year by year by year by year, and for example, when I, when I was like, when I was 18, uh, I still had to do like mandatory military service. Uh, they nixed that for the longest time now, but now there's a discussion to maybe reintroduce civil service, meaning you could choose whether or not you would go to the army or do like civil service, um, meaning then working in a hospital or the, the fire brigade or whatnot, something like this. Yeah. Uh, so there's a discussion to reintroduce this again. Um, also, Germany now uh, just actually agreed bipartisan, basically, um, on a special budget of 100 billion euros um, to, well, strengthen the military, to, to strengthen the German army, the Bundeswehr. So it's a special budget of 100 billion euros, which means Germany needs to increase its debt, which actually was something that the government said they wouldn't do, but of course they couldn't. They couldn't um, anticipate what's going to happen in Ukraine. So now, uh, thanks to the U Ukraine crisis, thanks to Russia, Germany now, um, yeah, putting lots of money into uh, the German forces. Lots of memes um, coming out of this news, of course, on social media, like uh, Ukraine war, and then Germany is like, oh, don't say no more, fam. Let's <laughs> let's amp up uh, the military again. Uh, of course, it's not a time to make jokes, but. I mean, jokes help us to uh, cope, I, I guess, to, to some extent. Um, so yeah, so that, that's something that, that's been happening in Germany right now. Now, as for, as for how Germans think about the situation, I think, well, of course, I think everybody agrees to some extent that this is, of course, a terrible situation right now. Um, then for the, German, the German train company, Deutsche Bahn, a uh, German train, they, I think, also said they would run free train services for refugees from Ukraine, from Poland to Germany, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Question is there, of course, only for people with a passport from Ukraine or also other people who are stuck in the Ukraine, for example. That's something that they had to figure out. All right. Um, now, how do German people see it, right? So, again, I can say I speak for all the Germans out there, obviously, but, well, I have family that's or older, of course, I have um, peers that are my age, and then I try to talk, for example, to my sister who's younger and, and, and peers of hers, and so on. So, that trying to get like some kind of picture. Everybody's agreeing to some extent that something needs to be done. However, what needs to be done is what's being discussed in society as well as in the German parliament. Like, how actively should we get involved? Uh, should we send troops, for example, NATO troops, of course, should we then participate as a NATO troop and um, send soldiers in there, for example? Um, how long do we have to wait until we, we do this? Um, should we urge the US to de-escalate? What's the right thing to do? Should we urge NATO, NATO to de-escalate? To say, okay, we're going to move back, um, you're not going to ask Ukraine to join. Um, by the way, you, Ukraine, uh, the, I just read it right now, actually, that the application to join uh, the European, to join the EU, right, um, has been accepted, but it's just the application, so the process is going to take a while, of course. 
So those are all things that are being discussed in society. And of course, then it depends on which spectrum you're on, like very left, very right. Um, the far right party, the, party the, the crazy brown ones in Germany, the AFD, they're blaming the previous chancellor, Angela Merkel, for the whole situation. It's, that's, it's all her fault, of course. <laughs> um, then the far left, I don't even really know what, what they've been saying. <laughs> and they're usually ob obviously against, against in, in interventions and disregard. But at least we all agree that we have to do at least something. Um, the center center parties like the SPD, CDU, and maybe even the FDP, uh, I think they're all on a, not the same page, definitely not, but on a similar page. Um, and when the chancellor announced that special budget in the parliament, he like people from all across the aisle, uh, all different aisles would clap for, for it, for example. So we're more or less on, on, on a similar page, at least in this regard. Now what's going to happen next is the question, right? And usually, of course, Germany is like the last country, I would say, that would say, okay, let's go to war. Because, well, I mean, yeah, history, right? Um, but now it looks like as if with the chancellor who didn't act for a long time, who didn't do anything, and the Germans, as I mentioned in the previous podcast, had like the joke that we have never seen him since he became chancellor. But now he seemed to have like, turn around like at a 180 degrees and it's like, okay, let me embrace this. Maybe it's time to actually now step up and embrace that role that everybody wants us to take. And maybe that's what they're doing now. Maybe, but again, there's lots of maybes. Maybe the new chancellor, Olaf Scholz, is actually saying, okay, we have to take a leading part here. We're going to be actively, more actively involved in NATO. We're not just paying money to NATO. We're actually supplying, you know, providing NATO with like manpower, and I was about to say uh, like military like weapons, but we don't have that many in Germany uh, right now. But maybe uh, that's soon to come. All right, so that, that's my my quick take on um, Germany. Germany stands on the Ukraine crisis, and yeah, of course, the, the president of the Ukraine is also a huge hero in Germany right now, um, as all across the globe, I believe. So. Even if Russia would take Ukraine tonight, like the PR nightmare that this has become for Russia, I don't think that they fully expected this. Like the the hero they made out of uh, Zelensky, I don't think they, they, that they expected this, like what kind of hero he would become for everybody across the globe. Well, so that, that, that's my quick take on um, the Russia invasion of Ukraine from a German point of view. Let me know what you think. Did I misinterpret something? What are your thoughts on it? Different countries, different stances, I'm sure. So I'm happy to hear your stance on it, your, your thoughts. Let's discuss it in a civil manner. Um, then I'm all for it. So I'm really ho hoping to hear or read some of your comments so we can discuss what we all think about the situation. Until then, thanks again for joining. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe to this thing. This is really helpful. Rate the podcast. That's the, that's the best thing you can do so that more people can join the discussion and we can have like a, a bigger, yeah, a, big, a bigger, a broader discussion, debate on what's happening these days. As always, please do stay safe, take care in, in those crazy times. And well, thanks for being here and servus. Mm -hmm.